Hey, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Steve, and today we're gonna go pick up my 315. Um, we were doing some work out at the military base. I can't film once we get to the base, but I wanna talk about the trailer and moving the 315 on the trailer and axle weights because I've had some friends who um, have big trailers now and they've made some comments thinking that my trailer can't hold my machine and it's because they're not really educated they don't seem to educate themselves in axle weights and everything so it did snow out we got some snow on the ground uh, a lot of stuff is covered in snow uh, but this is the trailer I do not use it all the time however everything works it has new tires on it um, all the lights work it is a hundred percent registered I don't have the boards in the middle because I don't need them um, we do not move small stuff on it I only use it to move the 315 once in a while and 315 doesn't ride in there so the reason I don't have the boards on the trailer is because I kept meaning to take this thing and get it sandblasted and painted which is still on my list of stuff to do but that list is just just it just got out of control I have so much stuff to do to my equipment and things I'm so far behind on everything so my neighbor who has a sawmill um, cut me a bunch of these boards and I have them just sitting in there those ones are all down but the ones down here they're kind of they're just sitting in there and um, reason for that is sometimes I take them out and I was using them on the ramps I have plans to reconfigure this trailer and get rid of these my buddy Nick has a eager beaver this is a Rogers 21 ton trailer and my buddy Nick has an eager beaver and what he did was he just put a big steel plate across here um, I would like to do the same but I want to make like a hatch for working on the air cans, um, the air tank, all the brakes. Uh, his has a big giant steel plate that comes across here and it's all plated across there. And then he welded some steel bars going across. Um, these are all pushed in. I think the guy I bought this off of had a backhoe and he had put the backhoe, you know, um, at one point that's from that's from something rubber rubber tired when you chain them down and they bounce you know they slam those down an excavator won't do that because it spreads the weight across same thing with right here this one's real bad I, this is definitely from a backhoe tire um and the backhoe doing this uh probably use snap binders instead of the ratchet ones you really can't get a lot of them back in the day everybody uses snap binders we don't we don't i mean i have one or two of them but we don't use them because you can't really suck down the rubber tired machines uh not that i have any rubber tired machines but you really can't suck them down to get them to stop bouncing um they they just you know they're just gonna keep bouncing like that so uh yeah let's go get this machine i can't film on the military base but um once I get it on here, I gotta sweep it off. It was covered, it was frozen last night. Um, once I get it on here, uh, I'll uh, bring you along for the ride and then we'll talk a little bit about axle weights and um, why you should know what you're talking about before you start talking. Right? You cold? Yeah, it's freezing. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, we just went through the security checkpoint. We can't film anything on the base, but we're leaving right here. So uh, the, the, uh, the uh, military officers, armed officers are behind us. But the gate used to be here when I was a kid. But after 9-11, they, they switched everything up. The building's not even here no more, just the foundation. But now that we are off of base. I can't even tell you what I was doing out there. But clearly I was digging a hole because I got an excavator with me. So just something simple. We're just, you know, doing some septic repair stuff. Nothing top secret, you know, just doo-doo. Burying aliens. Uh, yeah, Martians, not aliens. Don't want people to get the wrong idea. Uh, the Martians poop a 
lot out there. So, what I'm gonna do is when we get back to the yard here, we'll do a little talk about the trailer. Because uh, like I said before, people don't always understand axle weight ratings. Uh, they look at the size of a trailer and they think that, you know, they just start talking don't realize that it's, you know, it's a 21 ton trailer, not a 10 ton trailer. You could have a 10 ton trailer that's the same size, square footage of deck wise, but it's not rated the same. So, we will uh, see you back at the uh, yard. Okay, uh, we made it back to the yard. So, this machine, stock bone stock no quick coupler and no thumb is 35,000 what did I say it was 35,001 some I don't know 35,000 some change um, so let's just say with the different bucket I have before adding wear plates I haven't done that yet and the thumb let's call it 36 um, the trailer axles are rated for 44,800. Uh, the load capacity is 42,000 pounds. Um, I think when I ran the actual numbers, including the change, when I say change, I mean like, you know, the small numbers. It was, uh, what did I say it was earlier? It was like 5,000, 5,100 pounds. What, excess? To, to spare. Yeah. So we have another 5,100 pounds to spare. That's if you had everything on there. Yeah, that, that's if you had everything on there and, you know, like the thumb or whatever. Um, that's at 36,000. Bone stock without that, it's 35,000 and some change. So it's also 102 inches wide so it's it's as wide as you legally can for a tag trail some of them are not as wide and the rail is actually closer in towards the tires the only thing that they could get me for on this honestly is i didn't bring the flags because we are hanging off an inch the dot considers that over width um, we're in line. My argument would be that the D-ring is actually sticking out farther, but they don't care about that. If you are over 102 inches wide, you are over width. They will take a tape measure and measure. I do know some guys around here, some older guys, that took out their torch and they cut an inch off of all their tracks. There's a, there's a guy, a separate guy in town that did that just because he didn't want to get an overweight permit, annual overweight permit. He's unchaining it. So the way this works for me is I actually do need to, I have an idea to build a pocket in there to put a block of wood on there. I have to have it down low in there to get in our yard because the wires are just slightly above that right there, the wires coming in the yard. So I do have to have it down low. So. Instead of putting boards on there, I'm actually going to build a pocket for there. But what aggravates me is when people, and I have friends that do this, they say things like, you know, oh, that trailer's, that machine's too big for that trailer, or that machine's, you know, too heavy for that. I had a friend that recently commented on something and said, looks kind of heavy. It's like, well, because here's the thing. My friend James has... A 317. The 317 is significantly heavier than the 315, even though they have the same footprint, basically. But that's a heavier, dutier machine. He also has a quick coupler. So a lot of the guys nowadays, what they're doing is, is they're ordering these machines with spare buckets, quick couplers. I forget how much the quick coupler weighs, like 800 pounds maybe or something. I don't know. I... I off the top of my head, don't quote me on any of these exact numbers. It's just the idea behind what I'm saying that you have to keep in mind. You start adding things to the machine, like quick coupler, swing bucket, grading bucket, all that. That bucket there 
right now is thin because I haven't added any more wear plates. It just has the stock wear plates. You know, it's it's really not not beefed up like the a bucket that was on here before had thick plates. You start adding weight to these machines, um, you know, in I think the 317, what the 317 weigh? Like 40,000 pounds or something? 40, 42 or something like that. And he bring and he always brings the spare bucket. Um, yeah, not big, always. Sometimes the spare bucket's a big bucket. It's probably it's like the same size as this one, but twice as wide at least. Right. It's a huge bucket. Three seventeen is significantly heavier. Yeah, it's significantly heavier. Even though we've discovered it's the same footprint. Yeah, it's just like beefy. It's like a little. It's like a bulldog. You know, I think it's I think a lot of it is because of the um, all the stuff um, that's added to it the quick well, that and, the counterweight's really tall. and I don't think it's the counterweight I think but, but the counterweight's tall. It's yeah but listen tall. to me listen to me that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is what I think it is I think it's a pro the progressive link thumb this doesn't have a progressive link thumb yeah, that adds so it has extra heavy duty the link is a steel link in between there he has the quick coupler so that adds weight. Yeah. And then if you want to bring the grading bucket, it's significantly bigger. That big, what is it, six foot, whatever? Yeah, that's a big bucket. Yeah, so anyways, that's that. And then the other thing, too, is about the truck. I can't remember, but they allow you on the trailer, um, they allow you tongue weight. I can't remember if it was 3% or something. Um, I totally forgot. Why? Because I, I don't care. I don't care what it is because the trailer is totally legal to carry the machine. And then, so, the only thing you have to remember is you have to have an overweight permit if it's more than 102 wide. Um, you really don't want to be maxed out. You want to have some weight in between. Like I said, uh, when I crunched the numbers, this had 5,100 pounds to spare. Um, and you also want to make sure that you are registered correctly because they will check your registration. And then um, you want to have flags for your overweight flags. And then you want to make sure you have a truck that can pull it. This truck here is totally legal to pull it. For some reason, I don't know why, people always make comments thinking that my truck is overweighted. Uh, like I said in the last video that I posted, this has an all-aluminum cab, all-aluminum hood. The floor in a 359 is a half-inch thick piece of plywood. You know, we were, you know, aluminum tanks, aluminum steps, aluminum rims, um, air ride, so there's no leaf spring pack. Half inch thick aluminum frame. The frame is aluminum. So it all goes by weight, not by looks. Uh, I've been pulled over before and I've laughed at the DOT and go, yeah, go ahead, just weigh me. And when they do, they're really disappointed because they thought they were going to get me. It's like a friend of mine was hauling a dump truck that was loaded uh, triaxle packed. And he had bark mulch in it. Tarped. It was tarped. But he got pulled over and he, the guy says, I'm going to weigh you. I'm going to weigh you. You're overloaded. He goes, no, I'm not. And he goes, you're overloaded. I know you are. Look at the size of the hump. And it's like, you can't go by that. So... That's my thing on trailers. Now, you could have a low bed, right? Like a, you could have a 35 ton low bed that looks the same as a 40 ton low bed. Um, you can have a gooseneck. Um, this, the towing company that brought this, when I bought this, my friend Randall, uh, this trailer wasn't registered at the time, but when I bought this, my friend uh, on a gooseneck tag along, uh, so it's basically looks like this, but it's a gooseneck over the fifth, uh, it's like fifth wheel gooseneck. Um, that was a 25 ton trailer, even though it only had two axles. Then my friend Nick has a, a triple axle. It's a little bit longer than this, but it's a 30 ton trailer, so it goes by axle weight rating. But anyways, that's, that's kind of been bugging me lately, because people just like to just say crazy stuff without you know i mean you got to look into some stuff and do a little bit of research before you open your mouth we do have plans to redo this trailer and when i redo this trailer i'm going to build a nice i'm thinking 
I'm thinking of welding in like a big tray here with a block holder to hold that instead of just putting it on that beam. Because um, it's got to be down. You have to have four points of contact. The most important part with these machines is, you know, a 35,000 pound machine is 35,000 pounds downward. Okay. You don't want these to slide side to side. So when we chain bind them, we just pull outward here and on the other side the same. And you're just trying to keep the tracks from sliding side to side because it'll stay on this trail all day long until you get it to slide and then they slide and they fall off. Um, so <clears throat> you gotta do four points of contact plus one over, they call it appendage or whatever, but one over the stick or boom, whatever you wanna call it, stick, boom. Actually, that is the stick, that is the boom. So, um, but if you have like a, a man lift, it has like, you know, just a straight boom with a basket. You need to put a strap or something unless you have a swing pin. I personally, whenever I would move those things, the man lifts, I had a boss at a rental company and I drove the low bed. I would not bother with the swing pin. I would put a strap over it because you have to be pulled over for them to go up and check that you have the swing pin put in. And why get pulled over? You know what I mean? I If you leave the strap over it, they can visually see it and then they won't they won't pull you over for it the whole thing is looks today i could have got pulled over because i did not bring the flags for that extra inch so that was the only thing um the other thing too is there's some debate on whether or not to cover the uh exhaust for the turbo um i've been seeing some guys there's a guy that put a leaf blower in it on a truck and he tested it and they don't spin. They, it's, I've always done it cause I was always told to do it but I stopped doing it after watching that video where he, he tested it and he proved to everybody that the pressure on the motor will not let, in the way that the turbo's designed, it will not let it spin. So I stopped doing it. The other thing too is I've realized ever since I was a kid, I never seen anybody else do it and I not once I've ever heard of anybody blowing a turbo, so I've given up on that. I, I think it's a bull bull crap myth now. So anyways. Yep, he's been wanting to get rid of this dead bush for a while. Not surprised. This is the one you always hated, right? Yeah, it's the one you hated too. I always said it was in the way when it was alive. But uh, it died, so sort of the one behind it. Womp womp. All right guys, on that note, we'll uh, catch you on the next one.